Well, I think um, gender inequality is not a natural human condition, I think. But the idea that somehow women have to be in an inferior position or not quite so dominant position is really a, a wholly artificial thought which could be banished. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's easy to banish. But I think the solution to this, I mean, there are really two issues here. There is an issue of enlightenment, and there is an issue of agency. The agency is an easier issue to deal with, namely that whenever you are in a situation where um, people whose lives are affected, consider, take say, young women, have greater role as agents in family decisions, you would see that their lives would have to, uh, would receive certain degrees of attention which it may not otherwise. Just to give an example, that, that uh, it came uh, to me not as a surprise, uh, because I've looked at international comparison, and I knew from the work of Caldwell and others that um, uh, women's education and women's uh, uh, voice in family affairs is among the biggest factor on reducing fertility rate. Uh, but then it didn't come as a surprise when we looked at the inter-state and then inter-district comparisons of hundreds and hundreds of districts in India. And it turned out that the, when we were doing first the studies, Mamata Murti was a great figure behind it, and Jean Dres and, and, and a few others. The, the figures that were, results that were emerging is that even though the fertility rate going back to the 1970s varied between seven children per couple in some families to already below replacement, 1.8 in, 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 in Kerala, um, that the two factors that explain all the difference, pretty much all the difference, are women's literacy and education and women's gainful employment in earning and income from outside, each of which increase the voice of women in, and their agency in family affairs. And no one's lives are as much affected uh, as that of young women from over-frequent rearing and bearing of children. And if they have more voice, fertility rate dramatically comes down. So I think there's that agency issue, and where there's also evidence that women's education uh, reduces child mortality, reduces gender discrimination between boys and girls, and so on. There had to be better understanding of the importance of, uh, of treating human beings as equal, not as boys and girls, or men and women. And I think that's a, that's a big challenge if we have a society where um, uh, girls are uh, systematically discriminated, whether before or whether after birth, even after birth, or even before birth, the attitude of mine, which says I want, would like to have a boy, not a girl, that itself is very debilitating for a society. It's an attitudinal issue about giving human beings the respect, all human beings, the respect that they deserve. Ideas of human rights depend on it, the ideas of, uh, of social equity depend on it. There can't be two different standards on that. There's also the thing that in day-to-day -day living, that if you have a severely imbalanced uh, women uh, you know, uh, population, they may lead to uh, various kinds of distortion. Some people talk too much about it, you know, and that's about the... And, and, uh, and if, you are, if you get to very mechanically thinking economists, you would even say the price mechanism will get it all right. As women become scarcer, they become more valued. So the, as it were, the bride price rises, and as a result, there's more incentive to produce girls. I, I think this is absolute nonsense, actually. That's not the way these social processes work. These are issues where I think the first issue is the most important one the attitudinal difference, how to deal with it. And that, it doesn't have to have bad effect. It does have bad effect, but it doesn't have to have bad effect for it to be an intensely bad thing. Why should you think of men and women differently? I'm often asked the question, what made me interested in gender inequality? I 
didn't think that I was interested in gender. I thought I was interested in human beings. And if one group of them happened to be uh, much more neglected than others, then interest in human beings naturally translate into greater interest on the lives of those who were more deprived. And so I think um, in that respect, the whole issue of feminism, and here I speak, if I may uh, unfurl my flag as one of the founding uh, editorial uh, board members of the, of the journal Feminist Economics, uh, despite my own gender, uh, the, I, I think the whole issue of feminism is also an issue of humanity. 